Uh, here we go, and we are now recording. So, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar this morning. So, this morning's webinar is how to use TikTok to promote your business. Um, hopefully, everybody's excited this morning for uh, for a very informative webinar. We've got some fantastic um, speakers today who are going to take you through some uh, some excellent information. Uh, but first up, we have a couple of polls to run through. Um, so the first of which I have just started now. So on your screens, you should um, be able to find a, a poll now. And that poll is, have you previously used TikTok? And your options are, A, no, I'm completely new to this platform. B, yes, I have used it personally. C, we have not tried it for our business as we did not think it would work for us. D, we have set up a creator account for our business and have dabbled. E, we are actively posting for our business. F, we have tried the ad platform for our business. G, we are actively using the ad platform for our business. H, we are creating TikTok posts for our clients. Or I, we are actively running TikTok ads for our clients. So uh, if everybody has the opportunity to do so, um, it'd be fantastic if you could answer that poll for us. Um, straight away, I'm noticing that uh, most people are brand new to the platform. Uh, very interesting to see. We have uh, we have a few people um, saying that they've used it personally, but uh, but don't currently use it for the business. And then we also have a few people saying they've dabbled with a creator account um, for their business as well. Uh, so very interesting um, that we've got people who are dabbling and interested in the platform, but um, clearly it's... Uh, it's excellent to have you all on this webinar this morning. Hopefully, we can give you some good insights into, um, into what TikTok's all about. Um, we are also seeing um, a couple of people saying that they run TikTok ads for their clients as well. So um, nice to have you here as well. Obviously, uh, it's always nice to share information in the industry, and um, we like to we like to discuss these topics and and uh, obviously help each other improve as well. So really nice to have you here. Um, we do have a second poll as well. Um, so I'm going to start that poll now too. Uh, and that poll is, what is your current role? Well, oh, helps if I actually start the poll first, doesn't it? <laughs> what is your current role within your company? So A is, I'm currently unemployed or looking to return to work. B is, I am a student. C, I am a freelancer. D, I work in a business in a marketing role. E is I work in an agency in a marketing role. Or F is I am employed, but I am not currently in a marketing role. Um, so seeing answers flying in now as well. So we've got uh, a huge percentage of people that um, are saying that they work in a business in a marketing role. Actually 52%, 55%. Good Lord. Answers are flying in and I can't keep up with the numbers. Uh, but then we have a, a small percentage of people saying that they work in a marketing agency um, in a marketing role. And also um, a few people, uh, five, 19 percent saying that they're employed, uh, but not currently in a marketing role. Really good to have you here as well. Hopefully um, we can help with that knowledge and, and help you maybe move into that role if, if that's something you're looking to do. Um, so, yeah, really excited to, to have, have you all here today. Um, so that's 27 responses in total, 57% of people so that they work in a business in a marketing role. So thank you for joining us today. We, uh, we really appreciate it. So we're going to close that poll now and we're going to look to crack on with our, um, with our webinar this morning. So, uh, two fantastic uh, speakers today. We've got, uh, Rachel first up. Um, who has a, a fantastic set of slides and uh, really excited for you to hear what she's got to say. And then we also have Anna, who uh, whose TikTok knowledge is uh, definitely up there with the best of them as well. So I'm um, really looking forward to, to getting cracking on this presentation. Um, so Rachel, um, if you'd like to, to introduce yourself a little bit further, and I'm going to disappear now uh, and let you crack on with the show. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Matt. So Obviously, um, me and Anna will be taking you through TikTok this morning. Um, me specifically, I will be talking through the organic side of it, and then Anna will be talking through the paid platform. 
So just a bit about me. Um, for those of you that joined the last couple of webinars, um, you'll be familiar with me by now. Um, but I'm Rachel. I've been at Annika for about three, four months now. Um, I've been working in social for about seven years. Um, obviously, TikTok is relatively new to me too. I've been using TikTok for about a year um, in a personal capacity, and we've been able to use it on some clients as well, which is really fortunate um, because obviously it's a new platform. Not everybody is... Um, open to trying new platforms and investing money in it just yet um so very excited to talk about it today um love tiktok i think it's the best platform it's my favorite um so hopefully you guys can get excited about it as well okay so what are we going to talk about to start off with so what is tiktok how do we create a strategy for tiktok platform features and tiktok best practice what is tiktok so obviously some of you in the chat said that you use it in a personal capacity. Um, I'm just going to go over it in hope that for anybody that hasn't used it or doesn't really know what the platform is yet, just to give, give a bit of insight on where it comes from, um, who uses it and what it's for essentially. So TikTok is a video only platform which um, uses vertical video between 15 seconds. Um, actually, you can, you can do even shorter videos than that. You can do a seven second video if you want. Um, wanted up to three minutes and the three minutes feature is actually quite new as well like that launched in the past few months um, you wasn't able to do a video that was that long before um, so it was originally created in China by a company called ByteDance um, it then changed into Musical.ly I don't know if you guys um, remember Musical.ly it was largely used by very young teenagers and children it was like a, a, a dance platform app where um, kids would lip sync and dance to songs. And that's where TikTok originated. So um, TikTok was created in 2018. It has similarities to Musical.ly, but it is far different now. Um, obviously, the, it's still very sound driven. Um, it has great vir viral vi virality, I can't say that word. Um, but there's a lot more to the platform now. It's not just dances. Um, there's there's a lot of different types of content on there. Um, so obviously, as I said, it's based around music. Um, and it was initially used by young children and young teenagers. But that's different now. The age profiles have increased. Um, we have a lot of different aged people using TikTok, a lot of different content on there now. Um, and there was originally some concerns over data security. So um, I don't know if you remember last year, America tried to ban TikTok, but actually I think that was um, a bit over the top. It never got banned. Um, and there was some probably some pro politics behind that as well. Um, but it's, it's a platform accessible to most people. Um, it's a mainstream um, social media platform now. So it's up there with Facebook, Instagram. It's not a small app. There are so many people using this app and people are using it commercially now too. So you'll see all the big brands running ads on there. They have their own accounts. Um, it's something that you should definitely consider for your brand. So um, here's a bit about the TikTok users in the UK. As you can see from the black bars that are going up, more and more people are using them. So um, I think the biggest increase of TikTok was 2020. And I actually think that correlates to um, when everybody was in lockdown and needed a bit more entertainment. Um, that's when I downloaded TikTok and that's when I did my most embarrassing videos and they got deleted since then. Um, so that was that was something that people could enjoy in lockdown. And obviously the, the age has changed with more people using the platform. It isn't just teenagers and children. It is the wider, wider population now. So this is the amount of smartphone users who have TikTok. Um, as you can see, it is still largely popular with 18 to 24. So 25% of 18 to 24 year olds have the TikTok app, app on their phone. Doesn't necess necessarily mean that they're creators, but they're engaging with the content there. Um, next to that, 10% of 25 to 34 year olds are using TikTok. Um, similar, 35 to 44. And then obviously it gets a bit lower when you're looking at 45 and over. But those stats in itself show that a lot of people um, are using the platform and it's a lot of people that you probably wouldn't expect as well. So even 5% of 55 plus, that that is an audience there that you probably didn't think that was using the platform. Um, so it is suitable um, to a whole, whole range of ages. Um, and then just the last one, TikTok overtakes YouTube for average watch time in the US and UK. 
Um, so that's that's a massive stat there, considering how big YouTube is. I personally um, use TikTok way more than I've ever used YouTube. I even use it as a search platform. So if I'm looking for product recommendations, places to go, TikTok's the place I go first because it's informative, um, it's engaging. It gives me everything that sometimes people might search for on YouTube, but obviously it's in a vertical format and it's shorter and it's bite-sized. So for me, it's it's a lot better. Okay, so firstly, if you want to learn about TikTok, download it and start playing about with it in a personal capacity. Um, that is the best way to learn about the platform because there are obviously some nuances with this platform. It is different to Facebook. It is different to Instagram. Um, so download it. And also you'll be relieved to know you don't have to dance. People don't always dance on TikTok. Obviously, there's there's a lot of videos that have dancing in it, but you don't have to do that. Brands don't have to do that. There are lots of different other ways to use TikTok. I certainly wouldn't be dancing on a TikTok. Okay, so um, we're going to move on to creating a strategy and understanding what to post. So just like any other social media platform, you want to plan before you post. So with TikTok being video only content, <coughs> excuse me, it might take a little longer to create this content than what you're used to. Um, so obviously, if you're using um, Instagram, you might be creating posts using Canva or having a graphic designer. Um, so the way you create content is going to be a little different and it's going to take a bit more time to plan um, because it's more considered. Um, but equally, on the other hand, um, the content doesn't have to be high quality. You can create a viral TikTok in a few minutes. If you jump on a trend, um, you can create it in your office, in your home, outside. It doesn't need to be really well edited. Um, it is very different to the, the standard of content that you'd post on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and also that's what people on the platform are used to. So don't worry about that. Um, also, like your other social media, use a content calendar to plot in your TikToks alongside your other social media content. So we want everything to work together still. Something to consider with TikTok they prioritize authenticity and entertainment over commerce. So if you're looking to sell organically on this platform, it's probably not going to happen. You should focus on um, brand awareness and engagement essentially for this platform. If you do really well at both of those two things, um, then obviously sales will come from that. Just an example, I don't know if um, anyone who has TikTok remembers the hype about Little Moons. They're, they're little ice cream balls. And um, somehow they went viral on TikTok. I've never heard of them before. And then their sales absolutely skyrocketed because everybody wanted to try Little Moons. Um, so that's just an example. If you, if you have really good engagement and really good brand awareness, you can create sales from that. But don't join TikTok and post organically in the mindset of we need to sell something because that content just won't work. Um, and there are minimal organic shopping features on this platform. Um, so you know how Instagram has become a lot more shoppable. They have um, the shop tab. You can click on the um, images to see which products are shoppable. TikTok doesn't have anything like that. Um, so it isn't, it isn't best suited for selling, really. But if you did want to sell, they have the ads platform. Um, obviously, there's a lot, a lot of commercial features on there. Um, it's used very similar to Facebook ads. So um, Anna will go into more detail in that later. But that option is there if sales were your focus. And TikTok is a lot more reactive than other, any other social media channel. Um, trends happen very quickly. Um, so if a, if a trend is happening and you think that you can get involved, you should jump on it straight away because essentially if you leave even two days to pass, your video won't perform as well as what it would if you've, if you've just seen this trend and you've just jumped on it. Um, because the viral, I keep saying this word and I can't say it, virality of TikTok is a lot quicker than um, any other social media platform. Um, and that also makes me consider um, the, the approval process. So if you're an agency or if you're working in-house and need to seek approval from somebody before you post your content, um, maybe have a different path for TikTok. Um, obviously, you want it to pass through quicker. And um, the, the quality of TikTok is, is a little different to um, what you'd post on Instagram or Facebook. So um, I think it's best to give some education to the business um, before you go in and show them one of your TikTok trends. 
that you want to join in with because the business probably probably won't understand if they're not using TikTok. So do an education piece and then work out your quicker approval process because hopefully that will help them get on board and you can get on trends and start using the platform properly. And then just another point, keep your content consistent. So without consistent content, you might see success on your posts, but the best way to get followers is to have a common theme with all, with all your content. Um, and also don't stray too far away from your core brand values. Make sure that you're creating content around that um, and you're not just posting really, really random videos. Um, so for example, if you're a solicitor, I know this is, seems like a really strange business to suggest for TikTok, but I follow some. Um, you don't have to be humorous. You can just provide really useful insights into different aspects of the law. You can help to educate people, um, especially that's really good if you're looking for um, perhaps a younger audience that wouldn't know anything about your business, but it might be relevant to them. And um, so that's just an example of how you can use TikTok, but not be dancing, have a common theme, but still provide engaging, useful information to people. So it really is a platform that can work for any business. And also to have success on TikTok, you want to post regularly. So um, if you can post every day, um, there are so many, so, so many different trends to join in with. <clears throat> Obviously, you've got your evergreen content. So all the content related to your core brand values, which you can post about. If it's not, um, if capacity in the team is an issue, obviously every day is quite a big ask. Um, so maybe try every week. I think I think that's a good place to start. Um, but you really should be making a TikTok. Uh, you really should be making TikTok a priority platform um, from an organic engagement perspective. Um, the success that you see on TikTok and the engagement rates and things like that it is it far exceeds what you'll probably achieve on Instagram or Facebook um, or any other social media platform like it's a really great platform to get on board with um so by posting more the content is shown more and there's more chances for people to see your content and engage with it and then also don't worry about your tiktoks being too different if you're really struggling for um for content or you don't have time um you can post very similar videos so you can test different audience different post lengths with the same initial content so if you wanted to pre pre film something and then in the edit phase, you can um, create slightly different videos, maybe post them a few days apart. And you'll probably see varying differences in, in the engagement and the different people who see your content as well. So that's just a, a time saving way of getting more engagement, essentially. OK, so like any any other social media, you need to report on your metrics. Um, this is to see how your content is performing, which videos work the best. And obviously, um, the ones which aren't performing very, performing very well, you can take them out of your content plan and just focus on the ones that are performing the best. Um, so TikTok do have a do have a metrics platform. Um, it shows regular things that you would see in a social media platform. So follower growth, video views, um, which of your videos are trending, engagements and things like that um this is this is the way to see whether your content is working or not and make sure to experiment because um, if you don't experiment you don't know how far your content can go so have fun with this platform okay so we're moving into platform features hopefully this is helpful for people who haven't used tiktok before but if you have obviously it'll just give you a bit more bit more background to the platform um, the algorithm is far more advanced than Facebook or Instagram, and the content is far more relevant than you could ever imagine. So if you're using TikTok in a personal capacity, sometimes I think, does TikTok know me better than I know myself? Like TikTok knows my inner thoughts, the things I spend more time watching. Um, it is The algorithm is insanely accurate. So um, the users that will be seeing your videos will be really, really relevant to your brand and will obviously resonate with your content so it's a great platform for that and we're going to go into um how tiktok's alg algorithm works essentially there are there are three um main ways that it works the first one is through user interactions so user interactions means the accounts which you follow the posts which you've commented on the videos which you've liked or shared within the app the videos which you favorited the videos that you've marked as not interested or you've reported 
Um, also the video completion rate. So if you've watched a whole video, obviously you've been quite engaged with that video. And also um, the content that you create on your own account. The next, the next thing that feeds into the algorithm is the video information. So um, the captions, the sounds, hashtag effects, um, whether it's got a, 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 whether it's part of a trend, all of those things um, will decide whether this content is relevant to you. For example, um, if you seem to engage with videos of one certain sound, um, TikTok will then just push other similar videos using that sound because they think you're interested in that sound. Um, so that's just an example of how that affects what content you see. And then obviously you've got device and account settings. So you've got your language preferences, your country, the type of mobile device and the categories you select as a new user. So when you join TikTok, you, you essentially select which topics you want to, want to see. Um, that's just to give TikTok some information of what content to serve you when they don't know anything about you at the beginning. Um, and obviously it's, they consider your language and your country because they think that the TikToks um, within the same country are more relevant to you. They obviously want to serve you TikToks with the same language. Um, so that's why that's part of it as well. So the For You page, this is um, your main feed. So when you open your app, it will just go straight to the For You page. And this is where you'll just see constant, constant vertical videos. Um, they never stop, they're endless. You could watch TikTok forever. Um, so these videos are served to you based on the algorithm and obviously um, how you engage with different videos and how interesting they are to you. Um, something to know is that everyone's For You page is completely different. So with it being based on the algorithm, it's based on your personal interests. You, you might see some trends, obviously. Um, trends are viral and a lot of people will see those. But you'll also see a bit more specific videos as well. You won't see repeated content or you're very unlikely to see repeated content. So like on Facebook, you might see the same video by lots of different publishers posted. You won't see that on TikTok. Um, that's not something that happens. It makes it a a really enjoyable platform to to watch because you don't get bored essentially you have a lot of different content to engage with and scroll through um and also if, if you see if you look at the image on the right hand side you'll see on the top where it says following or for you so for the for you page is content that's served to you based on what tiktok thinks you'll like however if you click on following that's where you'll see the videos from um obviously the people you're following um, but by default, it will always go to the For You page. Um, so if you did want to look at following, that's how you do it. And just to move on from that as well, you're more likely to see content from those who you aren't following. So obviously the default is the For You page. Um, you'll, you'll probably get engrossed with that and see a lot of content, but most of those people that you see, you won't be following them. So followers aren't such a big thing on this platform. Um, but if you did want to focus on followers and you did want to grow your community, make sure that you have a niche and your content is consistent. And I've used, I'm sure you've all seen um, Francis. He's the guy that's obsessed with trains and quite frankly, the nicest person. Obviously, I don't know him, but I'm so engrossed and so, oh, I love him. So he just posts about trains. That's all he does. I don't care about trains. I literally... I couldn't care at all, but I love his content. He's so sweet and so kind. And he's grown such a big following um, through these videos. And obviously, I don't know if you guys have seen, but he has the GoPro that gives his facial expressions really close up, but that adds just another element to his videos. Um, but he's been on this morning, like he's got a really big following now. And this is just through posting consistent content um, that gets everybody involved. And that just grows your platform a lot quicker than posting about lots of different random things. Um, so if you have one thing that you focus on, people are more likely to follow that. Then we have the discover page. Um, so on the image on the right, if you click um, discover on the toolbar at the bottom, that's how you get to this page. This is a really good source of inspiration if you're looking for something, um, like looking for something new to create, if you want to see what's trending, um, or just to watch something slightly different than what you usually see in your For You page, this is where you'd find it. Um, also, this is where you can search for um, users, sounds, videos using the search bar at the top. 
And these are some really good brands on TikTok. This is obviously my opinion, but I think I think they're good accounts to follow. Um, these generally um, all have quite big followings now. Um, they use TikTok really well. Um, they generally follow best practice. Um, and some are quite surprising. So m &S, the one I'm talking about here, actually isn't the main m &S account. The main m &S account does it well, but the store teams now have their own TikTok accounts and they are really, really entertaining. So the store staff make their own TikToks and you might have seen Romford m &S is a really good example. Like they are so entertaining. So they're a really good one to follow to show how quite a respectable brand is having a lot of fun on this platform. And then the second one I'd suggest is the Black Country Museum. And this is just a small museum in Birmingham. Um, I don't know how they're so big. They have over a million followers, I think, on, on um, TikTok from what I looked at last night. Um, so this, this is a fantastic, fantastic channel. They're really educational. Um, they have really interesting videos. And that is largely due to the location. Um, obviously, the Black Country Museum is set like it's in the olden days. And they have all of the all of the costumes and stuff and they have a lot of actors in their videos but their their content is fantastic um Ryanair they are a very 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 cheeky TikTok account they are um relevant to young audiences obviously they're a discount airline so they apply to young young audiences who can't afford super expensive flights and it really does seem like they have minimal boundaries so some of the the way that they comment on other people's videos and the tone of voice they use and like the slang and the topics that they might get involved with. Um, essentially, there doesn't seem to be much red tape at Reiner, but it makes for great, great TikTok content. And then LinkedIn, um, surprisingly, LinkedIn is really good on TikTok. Um, so their videos are educational and informative. So they will talk about um, um, things such as salaries, um, workers' rights, HR issues, um, how to get a new job, things like that. Their content is really, really helpful. And it's the sort of content that um, might be quite dry and boring to read, but they deliver it in a really engaging way. And then the last one is Duolingo, which is the um, like the language learning app. So um, they've managed to get involved in a lot of different, a lot of different trends using their OWL logo. And they have this little teddy, teddy version of the OWL logo. Um, and they've kind of humanized it a bit. So he's the main character of their, their TikTok. Um, but it, it's really funny. And they've, they've gone viral a couple of times. Um, so they're, they're a good one to look at. So TikTok best practice, how to get the most out of your content. So start with setting up a pro account for your business. Obviously, if you're using this in a personal capacity to test and learn, don't do this. Um, if you're working on a brand account, make sure that it's a um, pro account. If you are just using a regular creator account, you do also have access to metrics, but they're not as detailed. So um, if you are working on a brand, definitely change to pro. You'll have metrics just like any other social media platform. And there's just an image on the right to show you how you can switch to your um, pro account. Very easy. Privacy and settings, manage my account. And then there's a red button to switch to pro account. And then you just have to select which category you fall into and press done. So super quick. So moving on to content and sounds. Um, obviously, sounds is a big thing on TikTok. And if you don't have TikTok already, <coughs> pardon me, you probably don't realize this, but most of the songs that you hear on commercial radio are actually because of TikTok. They're TikTok songs. So often I put Radio 1 on, but... I actually get a bit sick of it because it is just it is just TikTok songs now. And obviously I use the platform quite a lot. So I'd like to listen to something a little bit different. Um, but they're all trending because of TikTok. That's how powerful TikTok is um, to the point where it's controlling the charts. Um, so when you're creating a TikTok, make sure that you're using trending sounds. And I would actually suggest to only use trending sounds because this will get your videos a lot more views than if you were using a sound which wasn't trending. So essentially... You want to do this because um, TikTok, if people are watching videos with a trending sound, TikTok is thinking, OK, well, this person is interested in this relevant sound. We will also show them this video using the sound. And that could be your video. Um, so that's a good way to get more views on your videos. And then moving into editing. Um, 
the the video the editing tool on TikTok is really good, like really really good. You you don't really need any other any other app or platform to edit your videos. Um, so you can either pre-record your videos and uplo upload and edit within the app at a later date, or you can just create TikToks on the go. Um, and that's filming within the app, um, editing within the app. I personally think it would be better to pre-record and upload um, and edit later. Just gives you a, a bit more control, and it it means that um, nothing goes wrong. Essentially, um, obviously, if you're creating a TikTok on the go, it it might be um, a bit more ad hoc and a bit more stressful. Um, if you didn't get the content that you needed, it's a bit too late. That sort of thing. Um, but if you're creating a TikTok on the go, this is best for videos that use like a transition. Um, transitions are a bit harder when you're pre-recording. You can't do them as well. Um, you can obviously pre-record a transition and save that in your draft and then come back to it later. So if you're doing a before and after type thing. Um, but have a play about with that. See which works best for you. Also, if you need to get approvals from other members of the team, it is probably best to pre-record videos and edit and upload later because it just it does give you a lot more control. Um, and then just a tip, um, upload your videos in HD. So this isn't a default that TikTok give you because they want to, essentially, they want to increase upload speed. So me, more people post videos quicker. They have more content available. So what you want to do is go into your, I've included some pictures on the right here. When you're posting the video, so this is what it looks like in your drafts. And then you click more options and then the page on the right will open and you want to click the button where it says upload to HD. So this will be turned off to start with, um, but you'll see a really big difference. So if you have the, the button off, your videos will be a little blurry when you upload them. But if you upload in HD, they're really good quality. And as, as usual with video content on social, make sure that you capture their attention fast. So in the first few seconds, make sure that you are engaging them in some sort of way. So if you know it's gonna be a longer video, tell them what's happening in the video and tell them to wait for the end or give some indication of they should stick around for the video because you want them to watch the whole video. Just a bit more and some editing features and um, best practice for TikTok videos. So use captions as the cover. So on the on the image on the right here, I've included how LinkedIn do this. So obviously you can see the gray boxes where it says working parents, creative fund and employment gap. This is just to show people what your TikToks are about when they come to your main feed. Because if you didn't have those, people wouldn't know what topics you're talking about at a glance they would have to go into all your videos and it's really hard for somebody to find a video once they've watched it if they haven't saved it so that just makes it a bit easier for people to um, go onto your page and watch your videos and then also don't worry about the quality of your TikToks in terms of what the content looks like um TikTok is very unfiltered it is the complete opposite to Instagram um it is the ugliest version of any social media. So a lot of influencers that are pristine on, on Instagram are not like that on TikTok. TikTok is very normal, very average. Um, and so you don't have to worry about your content being super polished um, because that's what people expect on TikTok. And also the unedited, raw, authentic videos do well. So um, it does take the pressure off um, the, the type of content that you're having to create. Also, I also use vertical video. I know that seems to go without saying, but um, if you're working with an agency or you're working with somebody external, like a freelancer who doesn't use the platform, they might not understand that the video needs needs to be vertical. Um, so just make sure that if you're briefing anybody that, that they know that. And also keep it concise. So try to keep your video as short as possible. Um, a lot of sounds are 15 seconds. So um, a 15 second video or less is ideal. Obviously you can do longer videos and TikTok has the capacity for um, three minute videos now. I wouldn't recommend doing a video that long because people aren't gonna stick around and watch until the end. And essentially you want people to stick around and watch until the end because that's how your video becomes more viral. If TikTok thinks that people are watching your whole video, then obviously it thinks that people are engaged and it's a good piece of content and it will serve it to more people. So you want to keep them short. So moving on to captions, 
I'm sorry for this poor lady for screenshotting at this point, but this was a TikTok where um, it had captions. I just wanted to show you what they looked like on the platform. Um, so the text tools are really important. Obviously, people watch videos without sound and you want your videos to be accessible to people with or without sound. And the good thing about, about TikTok is it has a caption generator, which is really easy to use and really accurate. So it will auto generate the captions for you. And generally, they are correct. Um, you might have to go back in and edit a few, a few little typos where TikTok's thought you've said something different to what you actually have. Um, but that's really easy to fix. It doesn't take long at all. Um, also, if you're using um, like the, the type, the text captions, so um, not the auto-generated captions, like the, the copy that you put on there yourself, just make sure that it's not um, at the bottom or on the right-hand side. You want it on the top right where this lady's placed their auto-generated captions. And this is because um, the, the, um, the handle... And also the hashtags and the, the bottom information will probably just get in the way. And obviously you have the interaction buttons on the right hand side and they'll just get in the way of the captions as well. Um, another another good way of um, storytelling is through a voiceover. So um, you could pre-record a video. You obviously don't have to be in the video, but you can do a voiceover on top of the video. So that's a really good way of storytelling and obviously add, add the auto generated captions to it. And that should perform really well. And then we move on to hashtags. So hashtags are different on TikTok. Um, they're not such a priority like what you would usually expect on Instagram. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Oh, God. I'm just going to have a drink quickly. So as you can see at the bottom um, on, this, on this video, they've used three or four hashtags there. One says for you page, I wouldn't recommend posting that because ultimately that's not that's not going to get you on somebody's for you page. But what you want to be using them for is for searchability. So if somebody's in the discovery page and they want to search the Peak District, this this video might come up because it obviously um, uses the Peak District hashtag. So it's for search, really. Um, it can also expand the life the lifespan of your TikTok. So I've posted TikToks about a year ago. And they still get engagement and likes and comments um, because I used a relevant hashtag. And that that was actually to do with the Peak District. So um, your content can last a while if you use really relevant, um, good hashtags. Um, use one to three. Don't use any more. And that's mainly because they take up a lot of room on the bottom. Um, and you don't want your, your hashtags expanding over your video. You just want them kept neatly at the bottom. This is something very big which is different on this platform you need to remove your expectations of people getting involved with your hashtags because this won't happen on tiktok um so obviously on instagram you might want people to join in with your hashtag use your hashtag you might incentivize it that sort of thing this won't happen on tiktok um so for brands to create really useful hashtags where people um engage with them they do it through an ad campaign it isn't organic um so just keep that in mind obviously Anna will talk you through this more um but I've just included um some examples on the right here of um hashtags by a brand so I've used Spotify rap so this is how it appears in the discover page this is the image on the left um so you can see it's a trending hashtag it will have examples of creators content underneath and then when you click into the hashtag on the right you have a fully branded page so um this is paid for by Spotify. They've created a landing page essentially here within TikTok where people can find out how to engage. Usually they will include an incentive for other people to engage. Um, but what they've added in, what they've added into this campaign is they've used creators. So they've paid for lots of different TikTok creators to use, the, use this hashtag and expand the reach. So this can be done through an ad campaign, but organically users won't engage with your hashtags. Um, so just something to keep in mind if if there's anybody more senior or if there's anybody that wants the hashtag to go viral like that won't that won't happen on TikTok without a large amount of spend behind it. Um, so that's all from me. I hope that was helpful. Um, Anna's going to talk you through um, the ads platform now. Um, I don't know if there was any questions that um, I can help with. I had the chat closed during the the webinar so I could focus but there might be some questions that I need to pick up here let's have a look 
Um, oh, Matt's been handling it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have, uh, we have had a couple of questions. Um, Nikki has said actually that she, she missed the part about um, copyright situation, but uh, Anna did. Um, thankfully answer answer that question <laughs> for us but uh if you wanted to just expand on that for us i think uh, it's quite a, a common question from a lot of people cool yeah um, do you want me to expand on it yeah do you mind because i can't find it in the chat yeah no that's fine um for some for when you do like commercial videos or business videos you're not um not allowed to use some tiktok sounds um but the tiktok give you like a list of things that you can use um, but they're also trending in that area as well. So, yeah, it's quite limited. Fabulous. Thank you, Anna. Uh, that's all the questions so far. Um, but, yeah, people keep uh, keep asking questions. Feel free to, to ask away and uh, we'll let the guys pick it up at the end. Um, so over to Anna. Right, perfect. So let me get on my side. So a bit about me. I'm new to Annika. Um, I only joined in June, but I've worked in paid social for over three years now. Um, it's my first time working at an agency. I've worked in a house for B2B brands, B2C brands, in medical, in the pub industry. So I've had like quite a varied experience. I actually started my career in video production. Um, I've got a degree in video production as well. So you can always change your careers. I love marketing. So it's definitely had a heavy influence in my creative process though. And then just what I'm going to be talking about today. So like the, uh, just give you a bit of an overview, um, the account and campaign structure, a bit about budget planning, because it's actually quite important when you look at the figures of like the minimum spend that you have to pay on ad, ad campaigns, um, just planning in advance, um, campaign types and approach, a little bit about the placements and audience targeting and ad identities, um, ad options and creatives, so like the fun bit, and just going to touch on reporting as well. So paid social and TikTok, I mean, I'm just a little bit of a background on paid social. I imagine quite a lot of you use it anyway, but some of you don't. Um, over 4 billion people use social media um, in general. Um, to put that into context, the population is 7.9 billion. So it makes sense to use um, paid social. 98% of internet users aged 16 to 64 use social media. So it's prime place to advertise your products and services. And why TikTok? Don't be afraid of change. I think that's quite an important message to have because a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to use TikTok, it's for younger people. But I remember back in the day, like with Facebook and Instagram, people were equally as scared. But actually, like you look now with like my mum's on TikTok, my grandma's on, on, on TikTok, sorry, on Facebook, you know, things like change all of the time. So 41% of users of TikTok uh, on TikTok are Gen Z and 59% of the platform is actually made up of millennials, Gen, Gen X and above. So there you go, that gives you like a really good like mix. TikTok users are expected to grow to 10 million by the end of 21, 2021. And also it's the fastest growing platform and has the most downloads globally. To put that into context. So this is just a bit about account and campaigns and just the structure of the ad platform. Um, I know some of you said you have used it before and some of you are new to this. So um, I might cover things that you already know. Um, so the TikTok account structure. So you have your organic page. So your business page or your organic page. Then you have the ads manager, which manages the ads for the organic page. And then you have the business manager that also that manages the ads manager. That makes sense. So you can have multiple ads managers in one business manager. And just about the layout, if you've used Facebook and Instagram before, it's kind of a really similar layout um, on the ads manager. So you have your campaign, your ad group and your ad um, tab. So it's really easy to navigate. It's not not like complicated at all um so it's very like similar to other platforms and then it also on the ad account as well this is quite unique to tiktok it doesn't 
you don't really have this in Facebook and Instagram, um, but you also have like a dashboard area as well. So you can ke keep an overview of all of your campaigns um, that are running on a daily basis, including it, break it down to like gender, age of your audience, um, how many clicks, how many conversions you have. Um, but it's just good to keep an eye on a campaign as a whole, especially if you're running lots of different um, ad sets um, and different campaigns. And then just about the campaign structure, again, really similar to Facebook and Instagram, really, really similar. So you have your campaign where you decide your campaign objective. Um, you have your ad group, so like your targeting, so who you're going to target. And then you have your ads where you create and you add your different creatives. And then just on budget planning, um, this is something that I came into recently with a client. Um, just they weren't aware of all the minimum spend that you have to have on TikTok for some campaigns. So some campaigns you have a £50 daily minimum spend. So when I talk about campaigns, I'll come into the next slide a little bit more detail about what that means. Um, so if you're running like a traffic campaign, £50 minimum spend, and then you also have a £20 daily minimum spend on your ad group as well. So if you have different targeting methods within your ad groups, it can be a little bit more costly. Um, but as in comparison to the platforms like Facebook doesn't necessarily have a minimum spend, but it has more of a recommended spend. Um, so that's just something to take into consideration when you're planning your campaigns. And then just on the campaign types, I know some people probably know some of this stuff, but some people will be new to this um, and how it can, um, how different campaigns can influence your strategy. So these are the campaign types I was talking about earlier. So these are what is available on TikTok. So you have your awareness campaign. So reach um, just to show your ads to as many people as possible. And then the consideration stage. So to drive people to your website with a traffic campaign, you can have app installs to get people to install your app. Um, video views, if you want to get more video views, really good for brand awareness. Um, Similarly to Facebook, it also has lead gen forms on there as well. So like instant forms that you can do on TikTok. So if you want people to sign up to a newsletter, they can literally just click without going off the platform. Um, that's one of my favorite sort of campaigns ever because it's just so easy the use. And community interaction. If you want to get more follows or profile visits to your organic page. But I would say with that to make sure, like Rachel said, to make sure that your content is um, consistent and you're actually um, posting content all the time um, otherwise people will just lose um, engagement interaction and then you have conversions to drive valuable actions on your website so make a purchase or sign up to a newsletter on the on the page or get in contact etc and then just on the campaign approach I mean I've included this slide um it's quite similar to other platforms I think it's like really important to talk about um so when you do like a campaign I think it's really important to do all of the different like areas so you first want to build awareness of your brand um you need to, if you people are not aware of your brand some people might be aware of your brand but if it's like a smaller brand you need to get people engaged and people you people in your mindset of like oh I want to work with this brand or I want to purchase from this brand and then you take people into the engagement stage so people who know your brand but you need product offers and education educating on what you sell um, so I think that's really important and then you take them into the conversion stage so you can actually convert people and upsell to make purchases get in contact etc and then just on available placements um, on TikTok and where your ads will show. Um, so actually TikTok allows three different um, placements. Uh, so you've got TikTok, you've got Pangle, and you've got Newsfeed app series. But actually when you're advertising within the UK, your TikTok is only available 
for um for the UK all of the other ones are not actually available to advertise in the UK um but there is actually a comprehensive comprehensive list um which you can look at um which will give you the breakdown of which countries that Pangol and News Feed Up series are available And then just on the audience targeting and ad identities, um, this is something else I've learned with working with clients. Um, it's quite limited in some areas, but then in some areas it's really good. So on um, TikTok, you can target by audience, so audience lists. So if you've got like a, like a newsletter list that you want to upload, a lookalike list. So if you all upload an audience list and you can choose a it will target people that look like those audience um, and you can target people based off people who have visited your website and then just on demographics you've got age gender location and also language um, similar to other platforms and then you've also got interests TikTok and TikTok behavior um, but I'll go into that a little bit more and device connection type operating system and also device price, which I find very bizarre. I've never come across that before. So you can target people on how much they um, spent on their device. Very, very weird. Um, but just start, like just to touch on the interest a little bit more, because this is quite a barrier when you're thinking about things. So um, it's in the early stages, TikTok of his ad, ad advertising. Um, so its interest is not as sophisticated as Facebook. So the categories that you choose can be quite broad. So for instance, you couldn't, it's more like travel, like an umbrella targeting rather than like detailed, like nitty gritty stuff, um, which you can do on Facebook. And also with like the behavior, um, that's actually more sophisticated on TikTok because you can target people based off their recent video interactions. So if they have liked the travel ca category, liked post in the travel category or followed someone in the travel category in the past seven to 15 days. Um, so that's like really interesting. And I would definitely recommend utilizing that, especially if you want to get engagement on your posts. And then just on the location targeting it is quite limited um i would say um if you want to target say someone in your local area i don't think you're going to do that um at the moment you can only target people in greater london greater manchester bristol merseyside nottingham west midlands west yorkshire or england as a whole and that's just in england you've got like different areas different places um so yeah, I would recommend like your targeting strategy might have to be quite broad. If you're trying to target like local areas, it's not ideal at the moment. And then just on the ad identity type. So there's two, um, two types of ad campaigns you can do. So there's custom identity. Um, so this you this won't be linked to your TikTok account so you just literally put in like the name so you don't need a TikTok account to run these ad campaigns essentially so you just put in the name of your brand and then you like deploy the campaign um but then you've also got spark ads which I would highly recommend using um but they're similar to boosted posts so if you post something organically you can boost that post or use that in an ad campaign um or alternatively, which I think is great, you can use authorized posts from creators. So if someone's a creator has post about done a post about your brand, um, you can utilize that post with their permission, um, and they'll get like a notification to say that they authorize you to use that in an ad campaign. So definitely, highly recommend using Spark ad posts over custom identity posts, just because then it links back to your organic page whereas custom identity posts don't link back to your organic page. And then just on the ad types and creatives. Um, so at the moment, for certain formats to be available, you need a TikTok account management um, and, um, and like a high budget. Um, so some of these won't be available straight away, um, but that's something you can work out later on down the line 
Um, so for hashtag challenge, you've got an engagement format that taps into the user's passion for creation. You might have seen lots of people doing hashtag challenges, um, but yeah, um, I don't. That one's not available straight away, and um, you will need a large budget to use it. In feed native video, so this is the one that's commonly used and is available. So this is in your news feed. So when, not in news feed, sorry, in your TikTok feed. So when you're going past, you might see like an ad, but you not realize that it's an ad. Um, and that's the one that's like available straight away. So you can tell your brand like a TikTok creator by integrating video content into the user's for you feed. Um, and then you've also got, top view ads similar to brand takeovers but they appear first in your feed uh, in the for you feed after three seconds of use so after three seconds of using it you will see an ad in top view and then just um branded lenses and effects um tailor-made shareable stickers filters and special effects um again this is a this is not available straight away. You do need to have an, a TikTok account manager and also a higher budget to use it, um, which is pretty annoying, but I'm sure that might change in the future. Um, and also brand takeover. So you brand takeovers are fantastic because they give you like prime spot. So you will only, there'll only ever be one brand taking over that category. Um, for a day so you'll never see two brand takeovers at once you have a hundred percent share so they're full screen ads that feature as the first thing you use when you see on tiktok and you might have seen asos do them quite a lot um for shopaholics let me i always see ASOS, asos using them um but yeah they're fantastic um but unfortunately they are not available straight away um and then also you've got custom influence there and this is what you can use in your spark ads which i think is incredible so if you wanted to promote posts from influencers or creators whatever you may say um it's really good and it's really good for engagement and then finally just like make sure you make TikToks and not ads. So TikToks is about creating content that is relatable to people. Um, a lot of times people fall into the trap of like creating um, like commercial videos, but actually you want videos that are gonna blend into the, into the feed and people are gonna see them and not actually think that it's a commercial video, but that's how um, a business video, um, but that's how you like engage people. They just need to look like, they don't need to look like ads, they just need to look like TikToks. And also you don't have to be an expert. I think people get really like scared and like intimidated by the, the idea of making like videos. Um, but actually on the ad platform, you can create videos. You have these amazing things like video templates so they can give you a template. They have smart videos. So you don't actually need to have video content if you wanted to upload your images you can and it will create a video for you um you've got the tiktok video editor if you need to shorten your videos or edit it, edit them down to make them smaller you can and then you've got the smart video soundtrack and tiktok hot music as well so when you go into these video editors you can overlay with hot music and it will say what's trending in the uk and again this is like commercial i it's not it's license for commercial use so unfortunately you can't use Justin Bieber but you can use other video other sounds and then just on the reporting overview um just kind of a brief introduction to reporting in the platform so this is not reporting that you download you can do that um but this is just some like useful things that you can know um, so like other platforms, you can analyze the campaign and add results. So these can be broken down into daily or, or an hourly basis, um, as well as a user time frame. So if you wanted to do it for like, look at, a look in the past month, um, but it's always really useful to know if you've seen like a sudden drop in the day. Um, and then again, like more of the detailed monthly reports can be seen on the tab. And then when in the campaign dashboard, you can also break down by age and gender and location, which is really in, interesting. But then unlike other platforms, you can also break down the results by 
interests, behavior and advice, which I think is like fascinating. Um, I was running some travel ads recently and actually I found like a lot of them were mums that were engaged. So it was just really interesting to know and how I could um, target my next campaigns and increase and improve my um, creatives. And I think that's me. Is there any questions? I miss loads of questions. <laughs> Great job, guys. Um, I think Thank the you, guys Anna. have been answering the questions as we've gone through. Um, okay. I know that a lot of people leave at exactly um, 10 o'clock, so I've just got a couple of promotions to do before we lend, uh, end. So first of all, um, I'm going to bring this up as an offer. Um, we're launching the 2022 Digital Marketing and Skills Survey. Um, it would be brilliant if as many of you as possible um, could actually, um, uh, I'm trying to find where they are, um, could actually complete this. Um, what I'll do is I'll just send it now uh, and put it at the top. Um, there is a prize. Uh, so the people that enter, we do a, a, a draw. Um, and um, it's we've adapted it a little bit. We're focusing a little bit more on skills gaps, um, but um, you'll get a published version of the account and a chance to win the draw. So please complete this. We need at, um, at least 100 people to complete it to get a good survey. Um, so hopefully you can all complete that. Uh, and then the second thing I wanted to talk to you about was next week. So um, next week um, we are, I'm running a very, um, a really interesting webinar again on the digital skills gap. But the most important part of this is that we're launching a three month um, boot camp, um, very similar to the one we currently do, which costs between two and three thousand pounds. But this is going to be grant funded by um, D2N2 and the government It's part of the plan for jobs so please register for this now um if you are interested and you've registered you click the button we will contact you and send you um, a form so you can actually apply but basically if you're currently unemployed um you're currently a student or you're returning to work um or you're in one of the priority um areas like over 50s um people from the BAME community um, then the course is completely free including the exams if you are currently employed, but um, you are, you know, want to pay for this course yourself, then it's 250 plus VAT, which I think is 300 quid. And then if you're an employer and you want your staff to run it, um, go on the course. Um, unfortunately, you don't get quite as big grant and the cost is 750 plus VAT. But that also includes uh, subsidized uh, exams as well. So please um, register for the event. Um, we'll be running an open evening uh, or afternoon uh, at the Annika office. And it is taught both online and hybrid. And it's for people in the East Midlands. So you've got to be over 19 and in the East Midlands to apply. There are similar courses being run in your local areas. So um, if you're not aware of the digital skills gap and the digital boot camps, it's called the Digital Skills Boot Camps, then um, if you're not in the East Midlands, um, then um, you may find that there's a scheme near you. And then finally, um, we like to do this to give a bit of kudos to the guys. Um, if you have enjoyed today's webinar, there's been lots of you on it, uh, please could you write a little review? Um, please mention... Um, Anna or um, Rachel, depending on or both, um, if you like both of them. Um, but these reviews um, are really helpful for us to, um, particularly when things like the reason we got the grant money um, was because they saw all the reviews and people love what we're doing and it really helps to sort of spread the word. So um, please do um, uh, give the guys a review. Um, so thank you. That's it for me. Um, I know I've taken over at the end, but I know, I, but we've run a bit short of time. But thank you very much, everybody, for all your contributions. Um, uh, you've all done a brilliant job today. And, 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 and Matt, you did a great job of hosting at the beginning. Um, so have a great weekend, everybody. And um, we'll see you all next Friday, hopefully. Um, so thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you yeah. And you'll get the video in a couple of hours. So uh, look out for that. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.